So, on the matter of the infallible Catholic Church interpreter of the Bible, point six, if one cannot understand the inspired writings of Peter, the supposed first pope, how does one know one can understand the infallible interpretations of the present pope? Good question. We raise other vital questions. If we cannot understand the inspired writings of Peter, the supposed first pope, how do we know we can understand the infallible interpretations of the present pope? Catholic officials argue, in order that he, the pope, should be infallible, it is necessary that his teaching should not be given by word of mouth, but in writing in a regular document. For if he merely spoke, some uncertainty would exist as to what he actually said. They should be able to see that in order to prevent uncertainty concerning his will, God has already given infallible writings. Point seven. Who gives the infallible interpretations of the infallible interpreter? Ha! Huh. Yes. Furthermore, we ask, who gives the infallible interpretations of the infallible interpreter? In other words, will they place another to give infallible interpretations of the Pope's interpretations if some do not understand? The point is, man needs a starting point somewhere. He needs an infallible standard which stands as the one supreme authority. God has given that standard, his sacred writings, and he has made it readily available for all who want it. Nowhere did God tell us to go to an infallible interpreter to get the true meaning of his holy word. Point eight. God did not give us an infallible interpreter of the word, but gave us the word itself. And he wants and expects all to properly interpret it. Interesting. Don't you think? And if you're led to believe in the gospel, you have the inspired Holy Spirit within you, in your spirit, to lead you to the understanding. And he'll lead you to others who are imperfect, albeit. I've learned this many times. You keep on searching, but you keep on reading yourself and compare your studies versus people that tell you what the Bible says. So many times people in authority tell you what it says and they're so far off. God did not give us an infallible interpreter of the word, but gave us the word itself. And he wants and expects all to properly interpret it. This does not mean that man will always correctly interpret it. Man often fails and does not measure up to what God requires of him. When man fails in his effort to interpret the word, it does not mean that the word is useless without an infallible interpreter. When he fails, the fault lies with him and not with the word itself. Man often allows certain hindrances which causes him to misinterpret the Bible. Ignorance, lack of study, no desire for knowledge, following leaders without investigation, being prejudiced and closed-minded, twisting and corrupting the word, having no love for truth. If a man carefully and faithfully follows the commands of God, he will properly interpret God's written word. Study. This is not rocket science here. Exercise senses. Search. Receive. Read. I'd say even question. Question somebody's interpretation. Desire it. Grow in knowledge. Strive to understand. Let it unfold. Meditate on it day and night. Hear it read. Have it preached. Test. Ah, there it is. Question it. Test what is said. Prove all things. If an individual continually obeyed all these commands, would he understand God's word? Compliance to these commands is the only way that the sincere, honest person can obtain the correct interpretation of a passage. This is the correct way because it is God's way. I've gotten kicked out of more churches doing it this way. I make a statement or somebody else makes a statement, we have a discussion about it. I question one point or another. I find myself out the door. Not trying to abuse my authority, I don't have any, or question another's authority. If I'm questioning their interpretation, nobody's perfect, but I'm a, I should be at least allowed to say, 
How do you know that's true? We have a detailed examination of the self-evident rules of interpretation of the Bible. ICRules.htm Actually, what I prefer doing, I think of what I'm going to do, I'm going to change the name of the file because that includes the other file. Proper, the proper understanding using the, the rules of language, context, and logic. And in, includes the high C rules. High C stands for hermeneutics, isagogics, categories, etymology, exegesis. In other words, when you approach a written material, you want to know how is it put together in terms of linguistically. Could be a mystery, could be a bestseller, whatever. Let's see, text color. All right. And then isagogics, categories, etymology, meaning of words, look it up in dictionary, and so on. You'll read this and find out. It's just a, a way of how do people construct sentences and, and put it in a written material and uh, provide contextual consistency so you know who, what, why, where, when, and to whom. Does that sound familiar? You started this in the third grade. So the false doctrine that private interpretation of Scripture causes ungodly division. The following Catholics, Catholic officials argue the private interpretation of the scriptures causes division. Must it be, must it not be evident to the thoughtful reader of these lines, whether he be Protestant or Catholic, that the estrangement of such a vast number of our countrymen is traceable in large measure to the division, dissension, and anarchy which the principle of making each individual supreme and a court of last appeal in the interpretation of scripture has been brought into the world. <coughs> Well, <laughs> that's their argument. Others believe in placing the Bible in every home and permit all readers to interpret it in their own way. This unreasonable theory is still advocated even though it has split up Christianity into a thousand divisions. Think of the answers to these questions. The Reformation produced indeed an exaggerated individualism, which by declaring every man equally competent to find out the doctrine of the Savior, from his own private reading of the scriptures has led millions to the utter denial of Christ. All right, that's the points. These are some of the points that are being made and declaring thus it's a false doctrine that you can have your own private interpretation. Of course, you can always go to Rome and ask the Pope. But he's, make sure he says, ex cathedra. Point A. So, in answer to this point, let's see. A. Point A. It is not the private interpretation of the scriptures, but Catholicism's continuous flood of false arguments to displace the Bible as the sole authority that causes division. In other words, the Catholic Church has the right to make laws. They, they declare themselves. Jesus promised to protect his church from error. If she had not carefully selected and gathered the books, there would be no New Testament. It is wrong to make a private interpretation of Scripture. An infallible Bible without an infallible interpreter is futile. The church is the sole interpreter of the Bible. We should follow the priests as did the Jews of the Old Testament. Yeah, they crucified Christ. The general public, especially Protestantism, has been bombarded with a constant array of these Catholic arguments, of all, all of which are designed to exalt the Catholic Church and to raise questions 
and doubts about the Bible as the only authority. Such arguments have weakened men's faith in the Bible as the only authority, so much so that very few so-called Protestants accept the Bible as the only rule of faith today. Very few Catholics have any love and respect for the Bible, for they have been taught that it cannot be the final and absolute authority. Point B. Every major division in Christianity originated from the Catholic Church. So the Catholic Church is the major cause of division in Christianity, not private interpretation of Scripture. The Catholic Church is truly the mother of division because every major division in Christianity originated and came out of the Catholic Church. And if you look at the various Catholic churches around the world, they each have their own set of doctrines that differ from all the others, contradicting one another. Who's infallible there? The church in Eastern Europe, in Russia, South America. Most of the human traditions in Protestantism today originated in Catholicism. Infant baptism, instrumental music and worship, observance of Christmas and Easter. Nearly all denominations have been influenced by the Catholic Church, which is the great apostasy, the mother of division. The only way to obtain true unity is by complete abandonment of the traditions and doctrines of men and going back to the Bible. Men must begin studying the scriptures for themselves and begin demanding, thus saith the Lord, in all matters of faith and practice. Paul said, carefully study to present thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly to handling the word of, of truth. Unity based on God's holy word is the only kind of unity that is pleasing to God. So we have a conclusion. The doctrine that the church is the infallible interpreter of the Bible is completely false. It implies that the common people are too ignorant to understand. It demands that religious leaders make the decisions for the people. It indicates that God cannot make himself clear and is impractical and unfeasible. The scriptures nowhere indicate that God gave us an infallible interpreter of his word but plainly reveal that he simply gave us his infa infallible word. The Bible teaches that private interpretation of Scripture is possible and necessary. Jesus Christ and his apostles placed no authority whatsoever in the church, but instead exalted the Holy Scriptures as man's infallible guide. So we conclude this study by emphasizing that Jesus and his apostles placed no authority whatsoever in the church, <coughs> but instead exalted the Holy Scripture as man's infallible guide. Take a look at 1 John 5, 39. Jesus said, Search the scriptures, for you think to them in them to have life everlasting, and the same are they that give testimony of me. You often said, it is, not, is it not written in your law, expecting the people to read and understand? Luke 16, 29 to 31. In his story of the rich man and Lazarus, the sufficiency of the scriptures is again stressed in the words they have Moses and the prophets. Let them hearken to them. The rich man insisted that Abraham should send someone from the dead in order to convince his brothers on earth. But Abraham answered, if they do not hearken to Moses and the prophets, they will not believe even if someone raises from the dead. We, bespeech, we beseech our Catholic friends and relatives who insist on the living voice of the church as the rule of faith to carefully examine these and other passages, for they place the authority not in the priesthood or church, but in the written word of God. 2 Timothy 3.16, the scriptures were given by the inspiration of God, and furnish the man of God completely to every good work. John 20 and 31, they are complete, sufficient, and provide all things necessary to produce the faith which brings life in the name of Jesus. John 17, 14 and 17, I have given them my, thy word, sanctify them in the truth. They, thy word is truth. Therefore, only in the Holy Bible can we find truth and eternal life. There is no other authority. None can be substantiated or added to it. Again, we beseech and invite our Catholic friends to receive the Word of God and it alone as their infallible standard and guide in religion. May God be with you in your endeavors to serve Him.